When I think of Cell, I think Dragon Ball Z, Android 18, and a lot of episodes that aired in my youth. Eventually, it wasn't aired anymore due to being too violent. Maybe these are your thoughts as well when hearing the word Cell, or maybe you've been an inmate and have a different association with the word. Either way, my name is Rick Richardson, and in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the Cell Frame token and its service-orientated blockchain. Cellframe is a service-orientated blockchain. It's a quantum-resistant software which wants to build a blockchain on which other users can build a blockchain. So who else thought of Inception after hearing this? Leave a comment, let me know I'm not the only one. Cellframe was founded in 2017 by Sergei Sevancian and Dmitry Gerasimov. Both of them have extensive experience within the blockchain and IT space and they designed Cellframe's architecture to have a two-layer structure. The first one can launch subchains and tokens, and on the second layer, the subchains are organized in cells. Due to these interoperability features, they want to build an ecosystem of services in which peer-to-peer -peer exchange between apps will be possible. They don't like to call themselves a blockchain technology, but rather an infrastructure layer for building a blockchain ecosystem, something that Polkadot basically does as well. I'll make a video on Polkadot, by the way, in the future, so be sure to subscribe if you want to check that one out. Let's look at how Cellframe is built. We have a main blockchain, which is the core of everything, and then we have the cell chains. And these chains can be customized by the users and contain anything they put in. However, you want that information to be as secure as possible. And that's where the first layer comes into play. You can insert your cell chain into the layer one blockchain and benefit from the same security. So why would there be room for Cellframe? According to their white paper, Cell frame divide the blockchain problems into two fields. The first one is tactical problems and the second one is strategic problems. And when it comes to technical problems, this is being reflected in improving specific components of conventional systems. It's how most projects move because it's the least labor intensive. With strategic problem solving, you attempt to create a new technological platform which is fundamentally different from the existing ones. It's one of the least chosen options because it requires a lot of research, labor, and most importantly, time. One of the most important innovations Cellframe brings is enabling distributed services to interact directly with the resources of an operating system. Other smart contract solutions like Ethereum and Tezos, for instance, there isn't a way to interact with the operating system resources. Cellframe aimed to create a framework in which business logic will be allowed to build around the computer resources like computational power, internet channel, and disk space. Now, classic smart contracts also have an address of which it was deployed to the network. Cellframe-based blockchain does not because it is built within the system itself and only the compound address is one. The thought process behind this is that it will decrease the chance of fraudulent activities or illegal use of a private key. And another thing to take into account is that the NSA and NIST have been prepping for a cryptanalytic attack by a quantum computer. Cell can withstand this because of its use of post-quantum encryption. Cellframe is built from scratch with plain C, which results in more efficient utilization of CPU and memory. And their use of dual layer sharding also eliminates the bandwidth issues you may encounter. Cell is the native utility token that is used for proof of stake consensus, value transfer within the cell frame ecosystem and participation in cell chain auctions and leasing. Now, proof of stake protocols are a class of consensus mechanisms for blockchains that work by selecting validators in proportion to their quantity of holdings in associated cryptocurrency. The biggest proof of stake blockchain by market capitalization right now is Cardano, which is also known as ADA. There will be a future video on ADA too, so stay tuned for that. The proof of stake concept states that a person can mine or validate block transactions according to how many coins they hold. This means that the more coins owned by a miner, the more mining power they have. One key advantage of that is while staking your tokens. The more you hold, the bigger your part in the mining pool and thus higher your reward. Now that proof of stake is explained, we can look at the tokenomics. There's a total supply of 30.3 million, around 25.4 of them are circulating. The BSC version currently has a little less than 1,000 holders and Etherscan shows 8,800 holders there. The sell token can be exchanged and traded on Uniswap, Pancake and Oneinch exchange, but only against the stablecoin USDC or five other cryptocurrencies. So whether you're part of the Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain ecosystem, both have access to Cellframe. 
You cannot, however, trade, sell against fiat. So if you're looking to get into this token, make sure you trade your fiat for one of the available trading pairs. The contracts have been audited by Solidity and they are looking to get on central exchanges. Worth mentioning though is their 5% marketing treasury tax on PancakeSwap is a temporary measure in the short term to raise funds for a heavy marketing campaign including Twitter influencers, YouTube and further central exchange listings. Which is funny because I'm not getting paid for this video and I should be. Right, so this next part will be a new part of my videos which is the engagement. If we look at their website, we see that all team members have profiles that can be found on LinkedIn. The Medium website has frequent updates with the latest one being from September 8th, with a message saying that they'd be launched on the Binance Smart Chain, which already has happened, so we might have expected a new update on that already. They're active on Twitter with over 13,000 followers, and the latest tweet was from September 17th, celebrating 10,000 holders. Their Telegram group is a little shy of 8,000 members and very active, and they are on GitHub as well with 18 repositories and their coding language is C. So, back to the question, what's next for sale? According to their Telegram, there are a couple of things that are planned right now. One is the sell chain auction website. Another thing is an overhaul of their website and listings on exchanges like Binance and Coinbase. And they want to do a full-scale marketing campaign as well. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the cell chain auction website. The cell frame wallet can have different addresses on different blockchains. With this wallet, you can transact directly on any network. Service nodes on the cell frame core network, which communicate with each other, do the work of swapping your transaction in the backend. For example, you can transfer or trade tokens from Ethereum to Polygon or BSC with no problem as long as it's compatible. For a cell chain to be added to the cell frame, it must have its own cell chain slot. They're very scarce and limited to 50 cell frame cell chain slots, which is inspired by Polkadot. A cell frame also recognizes multiple cell frame cell chain types, and each of them has a different purpose. So we've got system level cell chains, we've got auction granted cell chains, and we've got community cell chains. And worth mentioning is that at the end of an auction, the smart contract is issued with an NFT token. This token can be sold on the market or used for its intended purpose. And when used for its intended purpose, it will be transferred to a special smart contract from where it can be picked up on request within a week. And the slots are being leased for a period of three years and each project can take up to two slots maximum. And when the lease contract ends, the cell chain participates in an auction again. Now CalVPN is the first network on cell chain and it needs to receive delegations from the cell frame community which in return will be airdropped CalVPN tokens or CalVPN needs to acquire enough cell tokens for themselves. Now looking at the roadmap, we can see that there are numerous things planned and it's currently laid out till August next year. So there's still a lot of development going on there, which is always a good thing to me. Right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you're interested in cell frame and if so, why. My name is Rico Richardson. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei!